Hello, and welcome to Rational Response, where I look at conspiracy theories and react to them with some science and common sense. Now, in my last video on Tartaria, I asked you guys if you had any specific pieces of evidence you wanted me to take a look at, and one of you delivered by writing a comment that linked to a CIA document, of all things. Now, I wish I could show you the comment, but when I went back to take a screenshot of it a few days later, it was mysteriously gone. Don't know what happened to it. Maybe the CIA deleted it. But that's not going to stop me. So let's have a look at this document and see if the CIA has actually confirmed the existence of Tartaria. The first thing we need to get out of the way is to confirm that, yes, this is a real CIA document. Its title is National Cultural Development Under Communism, and it was written in 1957. It was approved for release by the CIA in 1999, and is currently being hosted on CIA.gov. Link down in the description. It's a 13-page document that details how the Soviet Union treated minorities after the Russian Revolution, and up until the writing of the document in 1957. It's especially concerned with the treatment of Muslim minorities in the Soviet Union. The part that's interesting to us is page 9, where one paragraph reads, On 9 August 1944, the Central Committee of the Communist Party, sitting in Moscow, issued a directive ordering the party's Tartar Provincial Committee to proceed to a scientific revision of the history of Tartaria, to liquidate serious shortcomings and mistakes of a nationalistic character committed by individual writers and historians in dealing with Tartar history. In other words, Tartar history was to be rewritten. Let us be frank, was to be falsified. Wow. A CIA document talking about Tartaria and how Tartar history was to be rewritten. I can see why someone would want to use this as proof of the Tartaria conspiracy. And it is proof. It's actually proof of something very relevant to the Tartaria conspiracy theory. But more on that later. First, let's investigate what this paragraph is all about. The first thing to note is that the paragraph is divided into essentially four parts. The first part is basically just an introduction to the paragraph. The second part is a reference, noted by quotation marks and a reference number 12. This reference is to a book by Walter Kollars, an Austria-Hungarian scholar specializing in the communist world. That's right, the part about Tartaria in this document isn't even written by the CIA. It's from a book, a public source that you can read online at any moment. I mean, it's free, link in the description. The third part of the paragraph is just the author at the CIA repeating the reference, but in their own words. And finally, the fourth part of the paragraph tells us how the historical revisionism detailed in the quote also happened to other Muslim minorities in the Soviet Union. So the CIA document mentions two things that we need to talk about. Firstly, it talks about Tartaria and the Tartars. And secondly, it talks about rewriting history. Both these topics in this document seems to point to some sort of cover-up of Tartaria. But of course, we must have a closer look to find out what this is all about. I'll get to the part about rewriting history later, but for now, let's talk about what the CIA document calls Tartaria. <laughs> First of all, let's get something fundamental out of the way. Tartaria is real. Well, sort of. Uh, Tatarstan is real, and it can be referred to as Tartaria. Tatarstan is a republic in Russia, home to a number of Volga Tatars. And who are the Tatars? Tatar is an umbrella term for various Turkic groups and include the Siberian Tatars, Crimean Tatars, and the previously mentioned Volga Tatars. So the Tatars are real people, numbering 5 million people in Russia. They have a cultural and religious identity, and a long history. Now I'm going to skip over a lot of that history here, but here are the main points. The ancestors of the Tatars are the Rowans of Central Asia. They were the first people referred to as Tatars, or variations of the word, by the Chinese. After the Rowans were all but annihilated by the Gokturks in 555 AD, survivors renamed themselves Tantan. 
Centuries passed and the term Tatar evolved. The people identifying as Tatars or the Tatar Confederation were eventually conquered by Genghis Khan in 1202 and the survivors were absorbed into his tribe. When the Mongols reached Europe, they were associated with the word Tatar. While it has been speculated that this was because the Tatars fought in the vanguard in front of the main Mongol cavalry, it seems that the name Tatar was actually used as a self-identifying term by the Mongols during the first 30 to 40 years of the Mongol Empire. In any case, the name Tatar had made it to Europe and was associated with the Mongols. In Europe, the R was added, presumably because the Mongols were associated with the Greek word for hell, Tartarus. And so we get the term Tartar in Europe, meaning basically anyone from Central Asia. The next part of the history of the Tatars evolved around the Golden Horde. This was the westernmost part of the Mongol Empire in today's southern Russia and Kazakhstan. It gained independence after the death of Monkey Khan in 1259 and was converted to Islam after Osbek Khan became ruler of the Golden Horde in 1315. For a time, the Golden Horde was a massive and important nation where Europe meets Asia. But at the start of the 15th century, the Golden Horde began falling apart, being broken into several Tatar and Turkic Khanates. This allowed the vassal state of Moscovy to rise and gain dominance in Russia. Over the next centuries, the Tatars were invaded and became part of the Russian Empire. And after the Russian Revolution, the borders of what is now Tatarstan was drawn. And that's it. That's what the CIA document is talking about. The Tatars of Tatarstan and of other parts of Russia. There's just one little problem though. The CIA document doesn't say Tatarstan. It says Tartar and Tartaria. Why is that? Well, the simple truth is that the same people or the same geographical area can have different names depending on the time period and the language. Take France, for example. I'm not even going to begin to pronounce all the ways you can say France, but you get the idea. Depending on where you're from, the name of a country or the name of a people can be very different. And the same is true for Tatarstan. In Russian, Tatarstan can be called Tataria. Other variations of Tatarstan or Tartary are Tartarie, Tartaria, Tartare, Tatari. The list goes on. The Tatars and the land that they've lived on have had many names over the centuries. And they still do, depending on what language you speak. So I don't find it strange to see the words Tartar or Tartaria in a document about the Tatars. And it's perfectly natural that the CIA document mentions the Tatars, considering they are a very real people who have existed in one form or another for a millennia and a half. So there's nothing strange here. Except for the part about the Soviets faking history. What's, what's that all about? Things haven't always been easy for the Tatars. The Crimean Tatars had all their major cities destroyed by the Russians in the 18th century. In the early 1920s, 76,000 Tatars were starved to death because of Soviet policy. And in 1944, the Crimean Tatars were deported to Central Asia, an event that caused the death of 46% of the population. The Volga Tatars had been denied their independence twice in the 20th century, the last time in the 1990s. The Soviets actively tried to remove the Tatars' cultural and religious identity through arrests, propaganda and campaigns against Muslim holidays. Along with other minorities in Russia, the Tatars were forced to change alphabets after the Russian Revolution. This was done to unify the Soviet Union and to create an opportunity to remove unwanted books and writings in the old alphabets. All of this was done to bring the Tatar history in line with the Bolshevik interpretation of Russian history. The 1944 order by Moscow to have a scientific revision of the history of Tartaria was the Soviets trying to undo what they believed to be a mistake, the Tatar interpretation of history. The Soviets wanted to emphasize Tatar-Russian brotherhood and de-emphasize the importance of the Golden Horde to Tatar history. They wanted to remove Tatar national identity and replace it with a Russian national identity. That is what the CIA document is talking about. 
Moscow's desire to control information and interpretations of history, also that they could russify minorities and create a unified Soviet Union. The comment that introduced me to this CIA document was posted on a video where I talked about how difficult, if not impossible, it would be to fake history. I said this in response to a video that claimed that Basically, all of history was fake and that the Greeks and the Romans existed 200 years ago. I got the impression that this commenter used the CIA document to refute my claims about it being difficult to fake history. But faking all of history is a bit different from the historical revisionism that the Soviet Union did. Changing an alphabet, banning some books, and running an information campaign is pretty different from trying to fake all the historical and archaeological evidence well, in history. Furthermore, the Soviets failed, at least partly. The Tatars have a distinct culture, language, and religion to this day, and they still have a national identity that caused them to want independence in the 90s. So what the CIA document proves is that taking history is hard, really hard. Even when it's just a small part of history in a country that you have complete control over, in the end, the CIA document references a public source that speaks about a real Russian minority that has been oppressed. Not only that, it proves that yes, it is very difficult to fake history. And it proves another thing too. It proves that there never was a Tartaria cover-up. There was no conspiracy. <laughs> The CIA document describes how the Soviet Union tried to falsify the history of the Tatars. In the context of how this document was shared in a comment on my last video on Tartaria, I'm assuming that it is being used as evidence of a cover-up of a great Tartarian empire. But a cover-up by whom exactly? Just the Soviet Union? Because the CIA, according to this document, was very much against that cover-up. In fact, the author of the document seems appalled by it. If Tartaria was a worldwide empire that was destroyed in a global cataclysm, you'd think the US and the CIA knew about it and was part of the cover-up. In fact, even just the mentioning of Tartaria in a CIA document like this proves that there is no cover-up. For whatever reason, Tartaria believers seem to think that the existence of Tartaria has to be covered up by all governments of the world. So most, if not all governments, have to be part of the conspiracy. And the United States would definitely have to be part of it. And despite that, the CIA goes ahead and publishes a document that mentions Tartaria. Of course, it could have all been a mistake, but it's been 24 years since this document was published. I'm sure the CIA would have been aware by now that the secret is out and try to do something about it. Not that they would have to. As I've already said, the information about Tartaria is public information and always has been. This is all very simple. If there was a cover-up of a global empire destroyed in a global cataclysm, then most governments, including the United States, would have to be a part of that cover-up. And the CIA would not allow a document mentioning Tartaria to be published, at least not without censoring the part about Tartaria. If the Tartaria conspiracy was real, then this document would not be available for us to read. But it is. Because there is no conspiracy. In conclusion, the CIA document fits with the established history that we know of the Tatars. It shows how the Soviets more or less failed at rewriting history. And it indicates that if there was a global cover-up of a Tartarian empire, then the US and the CIA would not have been part of it, something that they would have to be. In the end, this very interesting piece of evidence is nothing special. It's just testimony on how the Soviet Union treated its Muslim minorities. And I think that's worth taking a moment to consider. The Tatars are a very real people with their own cultural and religious identity. They have a long and interesting history. They have been a part of major events in world history, and they have been the victims of horrible atrocities. I of course can't speak for the Tatars, but I can imagine that if I was a Tatar, I wouldn't like the fact 
that my people and my culture was being tied in with a fantasy empire on conspiracy forums on the internet. Not when there's a real history there that's worth remembering. Anyway, that is it for me. Uh, I hope you learned something today. I certainly did researching this uh, topic. Uh, I can't wait to see your comments. Hopefully the CIA won't delete them. Um, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.